Good evening, everybody. I am Rohini Jayanti from Hyderabad. I am a storyteller and a budding writer. I do write short stories and poems, and a couple of them got published in various anthologies also. And uh, my platform, I have initiated a small platform called Katha Karavan. Katha means stories. Karavan means, you know, it's a group of people traveling together. So we have a small tribe. So we keep traveling together. The stories always love to travel from one place to another place. And this is the first time I'm performing on Eric's show. I've been following Eric since 2021, Chennai Storing Telling Festival. And that's really amazing to listen to all the wonderful storytellers around the globe. And thank you so much, Eric, for giving me this opportunity to perform on your platform. Thanks a lot. And the story that I'm going to perform today is A Caged Birds of Phnom Penh. It's a Cambodian tale written by Frederick Lip. It's a story of a little girl who always wanted to have a beautiful life for her family. And before I begin the story, I want all of you for a few seconds, just close your eyes. A few seconds. We all know that we all have lots of wishes to make, right? So bring out that particular wish which you always wanted to fulfill, whether it is for yourself, your family, your loved ones, to the nature, to the universe, anything it could be. And hold that wish strong in your heart. And holding that wish strong in your heart, slowly open your eyes. And the story begins. A whiff of yellow winds flew from far across the land. A whiff of yellow winds flew from far across the lands. Ari, an eight-year-old little girl, was just standing outside her little shack. For a while, she smelled that winds. She heard stories that were told by the rice merchants that the land far away was filled with yellow and green paddy fields, full of blue flowers, trees, and birds that covered the blue sky with colorful winds. The whiff of yellow winds blew from the faraway land as they dissolved into the grayness of the city of Phnom Penh. Grayness that has been caused because of the pollution, the factories, the smoke, people. Ari lived in a small shack with her parents, three sisters and two brothers. She always wanted a beautiful family, a beautiful life for her family. It was always salted fish and rice that they had every day for their meal. It was one early morning before the sun rose arise, Ari tucked her hand under her little mat and pulled out a purse. She slowly crept outside the house without anybody noticing her and ran away far to the Buddhist temple, where she used to sell strings of flowers every day. And near the Buddhist temple lived a bird lady. And it was early morning, and the bird lady was rocking back and forth on her hunches. Ari went to the lady and said, uh, good morning, bird lady. Uh, I want to buy a bird from you and I want to set it free. The bird lady just looked at Ari. Oh, little girl, don't you have anything to sell today? No, no, I want to buy a bird. I want to set it free. All my wishes will come true, she said. There's a belief in Southeast Asia that when you set a caged bird free, all your wishes would come true. And Ari believed in that. What? Wishes and dreams are only for the riches and not for the rats like you. Go away, girl. I'm not going to give you any bird, said the bird lady. But, but I have got 300 reals with me. Here it is, said Ari, pouring out the money into the old lady's hand. And the old lady, as she was fingering the coins, said, Okay, okay, you can go and take a bird from there. 
Ari went and stood in front of the bird cage. There were around 100 birds. Some were perching on the bamboo sticks, some were nibbling on the grains, some were standing and sitting in the corners. Every bird had a story untold. Ari could hear the shrill cries in their songs, which somewhere resonated with the sadness and the pain that she had in her heart. She just pushed her hand slowly into the cage and held a little bird. The bird that was shivering, it was scared, feeling scared and its heart was beating like a drum. Thud, thud, thud. Ari comforted the little bird and this bird. My dear little bird, you have to fly away high and make all my wishes come true. Saying this, Ari slowly set the bird higher into the sky. The little bird started going in smaller circles, in bigger circles, in wider circles, beyond the buildings and beyond the horizon. Ari was so excited. She was jumping in joy. Oh my God, fly away bird, fly away as high as you can. She said and said, looked at the old lady and said, look, look, my bird is flying. The old lady looked up. I know what is going to happen always, she said. And when Ari looked up into the sky, she was shocked to see that the bird was coming down, coming down in smaller circles and smaller circles. And it came and stood in front of the cage. The bird was, the, the door was still yet open. The bird entered it. The old lady closed the gate. Ari was shocked. She cried in pain. You cheated me. You tricked me, she said, and ran away home so big. She just went and slept on her mat, still crying. Her little brother just looked up at his sister, put his, shoulder, put his hand on her shoulder as both of them looked outside the window. Another day began for the family in the city of Phnom Penh. Another day and another day. But yet, Harry, Harry did not lose her hope. One day, after selling the strings of flowers at the city market, she went to her grandfather's house and asked him, Grandfather, do you believe that how many wishes can a person make at a time, grandfather? My dear granddaughter, a person can make any number of wishes at a time, but all wishes in one single breath. Oh, is it? Yes, you have to take a deep breath, make all the wishes, and then write them on on a single breath. But you know, dear, all the wishes would not come the way you want them to come. They would come the way they want to come. Grandfather, do you believe in setting a caged bird free would make all of our wishes come true? asked Ari. Yes, there is a belief here, but not every bird could make your wishes come true. It should be a blessed bird, he said. A blessed bird? But how would I know? She asked. Your name, Ari, means knowledge, dear. You would know, said his grandfather, and dozed off to sleep without uttering a single word. And from that day onwards, Ari, after selling the strings of flowers, she used to save some money, giving the rest to her father. And at the evenings, she used to stand by the bird lady and watch for that blessed bird in the cage. Days passed by, days passed by, but she did not see the blessed bird. And one evening, as Ari was standing at the city market, she saw a new bird in the cage. Mm -hmm. The bird was neither perching on the bamboo sticks nor nibbling on the grains. Standing all alone in a corner, fluttering its little wings. The very next morning, Ari got up from her sleep and again took out her little purse and ran to the bird lady who was rocking back and forth on her hunches. And this time she said, 
uh, dear bird lady, uh, this time I want to buy a bird, uh, uh, that bird, she said. The bird lady looked up at Ari and said, I'm not going to sell you any more birds. Ari said, but I've got 400 years with me this time and I want to buy that, that bird. The bird lady looked at the bird and said, I have been watching you, looking at my birds every evening. And you know, that is a sick bird. The moment you take it out, it is going to die. Go away from here, she said. But this time, Ari was brave enough because the bird lady has played a trick last time. So she pretended to be brave and said, that's okay. If not you, I would go down the lane. There are many other bird sellers. I would buy from them. Saying this, she took a step one and two. But deep within her heart, she had a fear. What if the bird lady wouldn't call her back? But the bird lady called her back. Okay, okay, you can take the bird. But I know it is going to die as you take it out. She said. And slowly took the bird in her little hands. The little bird was so fearful. It was so frightened. It was, its heart was beating like a drum. Tut, tut, tut. Ari comforted the little bird and said, my dear little bird, you have to fly away high and make all my wishes come true. Mm -hmm. And saying this, she took a deep breath and as she was exhaling, she released the bird from her hands and said, my family should have a better living. My brother should get a job. We should have good meal. My grandfather should get medicines for her, for his ailments. And as she was releasing, she realized that she has not wished anything for herself. And in the last gasp of the breath, she said, I want, I want more knowledge. Ari always wanted to go to school. And so she wished. And she saw the little bird going in smaller circles and wider circles beyond the taller buildings and beyond the horizon. Fly, little bird, fly as high as you can. Fly to the land, where, fly to the place where the land is green. And make all my wishes come true. Carry all my wishes on your wings, she said. She was so excited as she saw the little bird disappearing into the sky and never come back again. She knew that her wishes would come true one day, but might be not the way she wants them to come, but the way they would come. And I now want all of you to close your eyes again. Imagine that you're holding that little bird in your hand Take a deep breath. Slowly release the little bird from your hand and speak out all the wishes that you want the little bird to carry on its wings. And see the little bird flying high and high and disappearing into the sky. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So that is a that is known as a folk tale from Cambodia. Ah, yes, sir. yes, Eric. I know where it is mentioned that it is a folk tale exactly, but this story I have seen you know people narrating it in different forms. So I thought it must be it must be slightly related because it had it has some beliefs, it has some myths, it has some you know. Mm -hmm. uh, elements of it, so I considered it as a folk tale. Yes, well, if there's no individual author who is known to have created it, it's a folk tale. Yeah, it, it but it, it has an author. That is what I was doubting when her, oh. you have asked me. Mm. It is written by Frederick Lip, so it has an author. Okay, mm. but it's become very popular, I think. Yes, yes, Eric. You know that happens uh, in the West. Uh, we have the story, the Ugly Duckling. Yes which seems like it's a folk tale because it's so famous and everybody relates to it but it was yes. actually written by by one individual Hans Christian Andersen yes that happens also that stories that are written by individuals 
If they are so widely accepted, they become folktales. Yes, Eric. Mm -hmm. Well, your acting is fantastic. Thank you so much, Eric. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And you're you're narrating because you you really visualized everything. It was yeah. very very realistic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Bala, go ahead. Hey. Yes, Bala Ramaswamy. Hi, Rachel. Okay. So. Nice, Darogini. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And the thing is, just uh, I just want to uh, recollect one thing about my grandson. When we were going there, he saw a person having a big basket in which so many chickens were kept. Mm -hmm. So he asked me, what is, do you have some money? He said, he's there in Toronto. My grandson, small boy, four-year-old boy then. Uh -huh. He was asking whether you, you have money. Yes, I have. What do you want? Uh, you just ask how many, how much, what is the cost of that basket full of birds? Oh. Then I asked him, just I was wondering because we are full vegetarians. But why he was asking like that? He was wondering. Then I asked him, the buffalo, and he said, some money, some amount. Then you gave me that. Why? What do you want? No, I want to buy and make them fly up freely. He said, you know, see what a good heart he had, you know. Because, of course, I didn't do that. We walked out. But the thing is, caged birds, you can think about the plight of those birds. How much they will suffer. How yes. much they have to be there where they are blocked. So that's a very... Thing, that story was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Rachel. Um, it was very, it was very, very moving. And you, after the second visualization exercise, I actually have tears in my eyes. Hmm. So it was beautifully told and captivating. I think it is suitable for all ages. I think yes. little children can yes. have wishes and relate to it. I don't know if they would be scared by the old woman, but the message of your of having dreams mm -hmm. and the hope yes. and that they will be fulfilled in their own time, but that the little girl is still working yeah she doesn't rely she doesn't rely on karma or fate to fulfill yes. her wishes by itself and it's a lovely story and wonderfully told thank you thank you so much rachel You're welcome brian um to to echo what Rachel was saying, the way to bring people in by getting the visualization and then tying it up at the end was just a wonderfully way to get an audience involved, especially when you're talking about online. And I think your physicality and your your movements really cemented how well the story was told and received. So thank you. Thank you so much, Rain. Barry? Yes, uh, Rohini, I want to say that I thought you you um, have wonderful rapport with the camera. You know, you look right at us and that really comes through. And you also um, clearly take joy in telling the story. Your smile is is very <laughs> warm and welcoming as well. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. This is the first time I'm uh, sharing a story on Eric's platform and I was like, uh, quite nervous uh, initially, but uh, it's really a wonderful experience for me. And the story has stayed with me since a very long time. The moment I got my slot booked on August 7th, I was like thinking of what uh, should I share. And I prepared a couple of stories, but this has been calling me continuously. So I just stood with it. Somehow I connected with the story so much. Uh, brain it is uh, the caged birds of Phnom Penh written by Frederick Lip. I'll share it in the message. Mm -hmm. I'll write it.
there's a there's a time in many stories and I guess in life where uh, the experience of the individual begins to involve a, a larger a larger picture uh, in one way or the other. And I always find that so interesting. Okay, anybody else? Any thoughts? All right, let's proceed. Thank you very much, Rohini. Thank you, Eric. And I will be staying for the next story. And after that, I will be moving. I have got my train at 8.30, actually. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. I'm traveling to Tirupati, so I've got my train. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eric. And thank you, a wonderful audience. I love you loads. Thanks a lot.